And with CJ and with all of our players, nobody has a defined starting role right now. Just want to see continued improvement from our guys, right? And are you improving and are you accountable, right, to your teammates? Can we all count on you to make the proper decisions and make plays that ultimately help us win games, right? For the guys on our team who can put us in the best position to win games, those are the guys who I want out there. What do you see from the team as they end right here where you're leading off this summer? Where did you want them to be? Where do you see it right now? For right now, where we are, and we're in a really good spot where we just ended on the field, like the way our guys were competing back and forth, offense, defense, both making plays, both challenging each other, iron sharpening iron. It's exactly what I wanted. And now as I told our guys, this just only sets you up to come back in training camp and compete for that job because we're all competing. And so guys are in a good spot right now. We're leaving on a, on a really good note. Uh, guys are confident in what they're doing, what we're asking of them, and that's all we wanted to make sure as we installed our schemes, installed our terminology, we wanted to make sure guys just have a, a really great grasp of what we're doing, and I feel like we accomplished that this spring. And so now, on to the competition. Can you talk about the camaraderie and the energy that you've seen from the guys after these last two days? All right, the, the energy, the camaraderie, I. Right. That's what I thrive on. I want our guys to be energetic. I want our guys to be excited about not only playing football, but excited about who you're playing football with, the men in that huddle with you. And that's where we've gotten, to see guys cheering each other on, to see guys you know, celebrating, having fun out there on the field. The camaraderie, the way our guys are gelling, is coming along just how I, how I expect them. My thoughts as we leave you know, for training camp, my thoughts are mainly like guys, I want guys who are committed to continue this process of improving, getting better, working out on their own, doing everything they need to do to come back in the best shape, so they're in the best shape of their life to come back and be in position to first compete for a job and second to help us be the best team that we can be. Yeah, I do. I feel like all our guys are in a great mental state, and they know, like, they know what we're up against. They know the challenges ahead, right? And if guys want to be a part of it, they'll come back and prove to their teammates that they are up to that challenge and they're ready to work. Your, your secondary has the combination of young talent paired with proven veterans. What do you think the ceiling is on how good your secondary could be in 2023? You know, we'll see. I mean, right now, being in shorts and helmets and only – how much can you truly judge? I think when we actually get in pads, we actually play games, that's when we see the real football players, you know, stand up and show out. So that's what we're looking for. And now on paper, it doesn't really matter how you look on paper. It's about can you be the best team on Sunday versus whoever you're going against. And that's all that truly matters. And, you know, of course we hope that our – Secondary is a, a strength of our team, right? We hope our defensive line is also a strength of our team. Our linebacker, we hope everybody just gels together and plays as one, and that's what it's about. You know, we will have strengths, weaknesses, but we're only as strong as our as our weakest unit. How much does that help to complement Damian? What do you how do you envision that? Looking? Yeah, Devin has done a good job. Devin has put himself in a really good spot. I love the way, you know, he the attention to detail, you know, how he prepares each and every day. So I'm excited where Devin are. We'll see, you know, how that looks with with Damian and Devin, Mike, all those guys in our backfield. We have a lot of capable guys. And again, we'll see how that looks come training camp. Yeah, those guys have done a great job. I think Coach uh, Coach Cole and Coach Frosser has done a really good job of honing in on the the, the small, fine details and techniques of our offensive linemen. Uh, and those guys have really done a great job all camp, right, of perfecting their craft. So again, as uh, it's just a credit to those guys <laughs> and our coaches for the great job that they've done with them. What do they think? Yeah, for our coaches over the next uh, few weeks, it, I think it's 
time for a little rest and relaxation, uh, especially for me. I've been going, <laughs> I've been going pretty nonstop and since our our uh, last playoff game. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely a little rest and relaxation to make sure I'm powered up and ready to go for the season. The same with our coaches. It's a time as to get the opportunity to spend more time with your family. Uh, go and visit family that you haven't seen in a while. So just a time to just reconnect with uh, personally with your family. Have you, have, you identified, um, have you identified any spots on the team where you want to spend the summer adding some more players before training camp, or is this kind of the team that you expect to go into? Well, see, we're always evaluating. Uh, we're always looking to add and get better at, at many different spots on our team. So. As you guys know, in the league, your team is never set from what you have in the, in the spring. There are always transactions. There is always room for improvement. So we'll see where our team goes, and that will be a fluid situation moving, not only training camp, but as we go throughout the season, the team will always be changing. All levels of Texas football have to navigate the heat. What are the things that the Texans have in place to help players do their best in this kind of the first thing is, you know, having the heat, have to make sure you're just out on the field practicing at an earlier start time to make sure we're getting off right before noon, before it gets extremely hot outside. And it's just taking the proper breaks and rest so our guys can actually focus on being a better football player and not just focus on the, the external right factors, which is the heat. So we do have to manage that and make sure our guys are well hydrated uh, and make sure we're giving them proper rest. Through OTAs and minicamp, mini what have you learned about Nick Kasseri? I know you went through the interview process with him and the draft process. Yeah. What have you learned from him now being on the field? Uh, Nick, has been, Nick has been really fun to work with. Right? Nick is a very knowledgeable, one of the smartest football minds I've been around. And it's not just uh, the scouting part when it comes to you know, acquiring players. But it's also just the football knowledge, the scheme, the X's and O's, like having his knowledge and having a guy who I can lean on for any question, right? He's, uh, we've become pretty tight over the past couple months and it's a really great relationship. And I'm, I'm happy to be in this spot working with someone as experienced as Nick because he's helped me and guided me through a lot. And, you know, it's always great to have someone you can lean on, someone you can trust. And our relationship with me and Nick, it's like we're we collaborate on everything, and that's that was our plan coming into it, and it, that's what we do every morning. We're meeting, we're making sure that we're on the same page, and I think that's how you grow when you have collaboration, you have buy-in from everyone. Just like we're asking our players to be one, right? Me and Nick, we're one on all of our decisions that we make, trying to make our organization here the best that we can possibly make. Earlier this offseason. Yeah, hey, everything's on target. The match will be good to go for training camp. What is your philosophy on stopping the run and what have you all done this offseason to kind of ensure you all are improved this year? Yeah, my philosophy on stopping the run is you have to. <laughs> you have to do everything possible to stop the run. All right, that's the first thing first. That's the goal for our defense is make teams one-dimensional, make them have to drop back and pass the ball. Then can we go and disrupt the quarterback? with enough pressure up front from our front four guys. And in these OTAs and mini camp, it's not many runs you can do without, you can't be as physical as we would like to be when it comes to stopping the run, just because of the nature of where we are with shorts and helmets, you just can't be as physical as possible. But stopping the run, it's gonna start with the mindset. It's gonna be a mindset of being the most physical team and playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Miko, when it comes to Kenny Green, last year as a rookie, he had to miss some time in the offseason. This has been similar uh, scenario this offseason in the knee surgery. What does the time missed do for him, and what do you guys think about him for training camp? Do you think first day we're going to be able to ease him back into some things? Yeah, we'll see where Kenyon is come training camp. Uh, it's, uh, for Kenyon, he has to be ready to go, and the work that he puts in over the next few weeks, we'll see if he's ready and ready to go out and compete. DJ, now, um, earlier in practice, uh, CJ, Murray, but he came back from the next drive and he led you know, the team down for a touchdown. What does that say about the result to forget about that play and then go ahead and move the team down to a touchdown and two minute drive? Yeah, for, for a quarterback, you have to have a short memory, right? You, you can't let one bad play become three bad plays, right? Put that behind you, you're going to make some bad plays, but as long as it doesn't, right? 
matriculate into other bad plays, then we're I'm fine with that, right? And to see him, see his resolve, and to see the way he was able to come back, compete, drive the drive the offense down for a touchdown there at the end of practice, that was uh, it was pretty, you know, pretty cool to see. Last one, Miko, was that your son out there with you today? Yes. As we approach, the day, I mean, perks of the job. How neat is that? <laughs> yeah, it was it was fun having my son out to practice today. He enjoys. Yeah, I asked him was he ready to go early this morning at five o'clock this morning. I didn't think he's going to get up, <laughs> but he was ready to go. Uh, happy to have him here with me today. Uh, proud of him and all of his accomplishments and all that he's done. He's made us proud, made me a proud father, and it's a blessing to be a father. Uh, not only with him, with my other two two kids, it's just a blessing to be a father and. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers coming up. I uh, wish you guys the best. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know, sir. Do you look at yourself as a sort of tone setter to set the tone for the defense yeah, my style of play. Yeah, you can say that. Tone setter, uh, big hitter, physical guy. Uh, somebody that's going basically give it all. You know, every single play, uh, put my body on the line every single play. And uh, you know, vocal leader. I try to lead by example, but you know, sometimes that like the vocal part comes out of me. And um, yeah, just gonna get a, a character. Uh, what I can say is um, health, uh, just being healthy, uh, the best stability is availability. Uh, obviously, throughout my career, I haven't played a full season yet. Um, but uh, what I can say is just, just learning how to take care of your body, uh, resting, what you put in your body, like all that stuff is like really important, whether you play football or not. What's it like having your head coach as a former linebacker? You know, you know, he's going to count on you guys if you said that. Yeah, nah. <laughs> you, you go from side to side. You're very active. Yeah. Is that what we should expect from you? Just you're going to be all over the place, and you know your head coach is watching you. And so. <laughs> so, me in general, you just cut the tape off. I'm going to be doing that regardless, whether he played tight end or quarterback. That's just me in general. But uh, having uh, a linebacker, you know, as a head coach, um, you can tell by his energy and everything. Like I told him myself, I, I feel like he still wants to play low key. But, um, I mean, just, like, having that mindset, I mean, it's a defensive mindset. I mean, uh, he's a player's coach. I can't say that. And uh, he's been, you know, in the same seats that we've been in, uh, literally in the same seats that we've been in. Um, but just having, you know, a player's coach in general, um, I feel like that's, that's great, like, for the locker room and, like, for the team itself. Denzel, can I ask you about your, your visors? It looks like some <laughs> custom, custom visors. How, how far does that go back to who are you, who are you rocking today? All right, yeah, so to clear the record, that was Deadpool, not Spider-Man. Like, there's nothing friendly when I put my helmet on. So, yeah, that was Deadpool. Uh, the custom shield is just something that I probably did, like, four years ago. I just, you know, like to do it just for me. That's about it. Yeah, it was Deadpool. No, the day was the only in date. It's a Miami thing. It's a Miami thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, so basically I'm just happy to be back on the field right now, uh, doing individual group installs, that type of stuff. And then, you know, when practice, practice, you know, when they start doing team stuff, you know, I'm off to the side getting my mental stuff. Uh, but body-wise, like, I feel amazing, actually. What is it about uh, this team with Nico's defense that you understood whenever you're looking through free agency? What is it that stood out to you? Uh, with the team itself, uh, them just giving me an opportunity, you know, to, to come here and play again. Uh, like I said, I was coming off shoulder surgery and uh, – that was pretty big for me, the opportunity. Uh, just been in this defense, this system, um, going on, well, like you said, year nine. And out of nine years, I've been in the same system or former system for like seven years. So uh, it's just, just getting, ah, how can I put this in my words? Just getting familiar with, like, their, uh, with their terminology. But it's the same thing that I've been in for the past, what, seven years. Can't dim these lights. Uh, so young guys like Jalen Petrie, Christian Harris, man, um, they got high motors, very high motors, very explosive, and you know they're making plays, man. Um, I feel like coach brought in, you know, like a couple pieces, veteran guys uh, for a reason.
just teach the young guys, you know, how to play how to play this defense. Denzel, yesterday Jerry Hughes said he was impressed by how vocal everybody's been on the practice field. You know, since you've been on it, what's been you know, your biggest observance? What have you been most impressed by your biggest takeaway from the defense so far? Uh, just how we all come together. Like I said, it's a new defense, it's a new scheme, new everything for everybody. So uh, just, you know, how we all, you know, come together, like you said, communicating, which is big in defense, period. Uh, I mean, Still got some work to do. I can't say that, but just like I said, how we all, you know, coming together, you know, like I said, we got time, we got training camp, but OTA has been a good look camp. It's been a good look camp. You've been with multiple quarterbacks. What do you see out of Stroud so far? He's competitive, man. He might talk a little trash here and there, but he don't do that in the locker room. But I'm going to feel, though, like he's carried himself like a pro, and he has, you know, guys basically pushing him behind him. Last one. Talk about Diesel. You were not mentioning Me and Shaq basically was just talking about this the other day as we was eating. Uh, we were out. I was just like, bro, like I've, I've been a part of like some teams, you know, that had, you know, what would you say, like the roster. But uh, just, you know, the chemistry that we all have, and you know, it's not knocking any other team that I've been on, but just like the chemistry, just young guys, older guys, like it is a great mixture. And um, just say stay tuned, man. Just stay tuned. Watch we'll us put it together. All right. Thanks, everyone. It's hot. Um, some other teams that kind of show interest. Um, you know, um, definitely uh, it was Minnesota. Uh, I talked to the Jacksonville again. Um, talked to um, Washington. Talked to a couple other teams, but um, the only visit I really took was here to um, Houston. And then once I got here, I kind of I felt the energy. Kind of felt like it was going to be at home here. Uh, I love the system that they was already running. I was already familiar with the, the system that they had. You know, um, so I kind of based my decision on something that I know I'll be able to get in and start and move fast right away. What about the system um, excites you? I know you see how there's some similarities, but mm-hmm. what about this that excites you? Um, I feel like the change up uh, excites me the most. Um, I feel like we got a, a lot of stuff in our and I back to be able to change things up, especially to be able to adapt in any situation. And but shit, number one would be, you know, being in Seattle. You know, I'm definitely familiar with, you know, that the whole process. You know, um, how do you run the system? So that kind of made a lot of things and adjusting really easy for me. So I love that part. What about like, you know, just looking at Pete Carroll's tree. Mm-hmm. Everybody that leaves it, they always have success with it. Mm-hmm. So what is it about that tree that allows? Um, I feel like it's the people that they play with. Um, I feel like in my situation, you know, I got a chance to play uh, with some guys that kind of helped shape my game a lot. You know, you talk about the Richard Shermans and the, the Earl Thomas and the Cam Chancellor, the guys who actually took the time to take me under their wing and teach me some things that I use now today that I'm getting a chance to show the younger guys who might haven't heard it yet. And, you know, and I, that's the, I feel like that's the difference because these uh, coming from that system, everybody had to learn everybody else's position. You know, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
Actually, how tough was it to have the back procedure? What was that like? Were there some moments where you wondered, you know, am I going to be able to get back to my own self? Am I going to be able to play again? Yeah, I feel like the in the beginning, I think it was the toughest. Uh, understanding being away from football was tougher than most people might think. And, you know, um, I feel like that whole process of, one, being there with the back injury, still trying to play and, uh, you know, be there for the team, losing strength in the glute, the hamstring, the calf muscles, just start to die out, you know. So mentally, that was tough. Having the surgery, I felt good about the surgery, felt a lot better, walked right out. Um, that was a, a blessing. But then I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't even sweat. And then I'm out here, you know, watching my team, you know, go out there, grind it out every day, you know, uh, being successful, you know. And the person who loved the game so much, it was tough, you know. It got times where it was kind of hard to figure out what was next, and, you know. And I felt like that's part I felt like I needed to go through because I felt like it showed a lot about myself to be able to snap back into that mindset, to be able to give whatever I have to get back to where I want to be. You know, uh, a lot of people wouldn't be able to do that. So, man, coming back out here, I was just anxious. You know, understand I didn't get a chance to play team ball since last October of last year. You know, so, uh, man, to get back to that mindset and moving around, moving fast, moving twitchy, having my strength back, you know, man, it's it's a blessing. It was a blessing. You were learning every position mm -hmm. in Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, how did that help you? You're, you're kind of talking about that. Oh, well, uh, it helped me because I understand where everybody's supposed to be at. You know, if we're in a certain defense where we switch it up, I know where my help comes from. I know where I don't have help at. I know where if I need to be inside, outside, leverage, doesn't matter what it is. I know exactly how I need to play each play, knowing that if I have help, then I can play more outside, or I know I got inside help. Or if I know if it's just me out there by myself, I don't have to rely on nobody else. Cool, I know exactly where everybody's supposed to be at, and that's the reason why I feel like it took my game to another level because I knew what I was supposed to be searching for. I knew each call. I knew exactly what it, what to expect, you know, depending on what route it was. I know if I had to take it all by myself or I know for a fact I can do something a little different and go straight for the ball because I know I got a little more help on the inside, and I feel like that's the part that changed my game. You talked about the guys who took you under, under their wing and mm -hmm. Seattle. Do you feel the responsibility to be able to do that now when you have a second-year player like Derrick Singh? Oh, uh, definitely agree. Uh, I feel like they ain't showed me for no reason. You know, I feel like that's a something, a legacy that you continue to pass on. You know, if you have a knowledge, you give it. You know, I'm not the type of person to hold all that stuff to myself. You know, I started off day one. You know, uh, whatever I know, I'm continue to preach it. You know, I feel like right now my main thing is I don't, I don't want to come in feeling like I need to step on anybody's toes because I want to earn my voice here. You know, uh, I know what type of caliber player I am, and I know what I've been through. I know how last year was, and I feel like I'm here now to earn my name. You know, earn this voice to be able to be that voice for this team, for these guys. They have to earn it first, and that's the part where I'm at right now. A couple more, y'all. I know it's still early, but what have been your overall impressions about the entire second set, secondary? Oh, man, we got some young, starving guys right now. You know, you got a person that's going to come out here and give everything they have. And you know, it's not too many times where you have the whole secondary that's willing to help each other, that's willing to grind it out, that's willing to compete. And every single day, especially in this Texas heat, these guys are hungry. And I love that because the type of energy they bring is so contagious. And that's the type of secondary that you need to bring this defense along. You know, you were, with understanding all those other positions, knowing where, where you relate to the rest of the defense, mm -hmm. in this defense, so talking to some coaches, it seems like there's more pattern matching than what they've done in the past. Mm -hmm. Could be multiple in, in, in the gut where you could be on the field. What what do you understand how that helps you? How do you fit into it and what they're trying to accomplish with your position? I feel like the main thing they're trying to accomplish with our position, you trying to get to us they're trying to get the corners in the position to really go for that ball. And, you know, and I feel like the main thing is the defense that we're able to play, the change us that we're able to do, the help that we are able to get, depending on what situation or whatever play call it is, it gives us the opportunity to really to play the ball. The main thing is to create turnovers and get that ball back to our offense, and they put us in a great situation and great scenarios to be able to do that this year. Last one, sir. How is your uh, family background and this strong Oh, man, uh, I commend him a lot. Um, trust me, this, that process was not easy. It was a, definitely some dark nights in there, 
and to have the family, you know, uh, I got to commend my wife and even my, my little ones, you know, to be able to, to put that smile back on my face, to be able to go out there each day to fight to get back where I want to be at. You know, like I said, beginning that back injury, I couldn't move, I couldn't sweat, I was walking different. You know, it's tough. Anybody who ever dealt with any type of injury, it's tough because you want to get back to normal. You know, so I commend, I commend my wife, my family, uh, my, my little kids, you know, putting that smile on my face because now I got so much more to fight for. You know, I'm, t I'm trying to protect my name. I'm trying to protect this family. I'm trying to be trying to get back to where I used to be at. So I appreciate them so much. Thank you, Sean. Yes, sir. I appreciate you guys. All right. Yeah, man, uh, very excited, very excited. Um, I think we're definitely going to be a, a good one-two punch. Um, you know, just just working with Damien so far, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I imagine it would be very easy to see what kind of person and personality Damien has. Yeah, man, uh, <laughs> every day, every day he bringing the juice, bringing the energy. He's a dog for sure. Um, just being up close and personal with him, you know, these past couple of weeks, it's... It's been mind blowing how, how sharp he is, how, how he goes about his business. You you could tell he's he's trying to find every way to, to get better. You know that's the name of the game. Keep finding ways to get better. And um, I feel like I feel like me and him. I feel like we're gonna do something special for sure. Yeah, uh, I mean, a lot of guys like to like to look at Damien as a bruiser, but I feel like I feel like he's more than that. Um, Make guys miss. He definitely, you know, he put he could catch out the backfield. Um, for me, um, for me and him, I feel like some would say I'm shifty or whatever. That's my game. Um, but I feel like I can do it all as well. So with that being said, it's just us feeding off each other energy. I feel like that's what it's going to come come down to throughout the season, us feeding off each other energy, picking each other's brains, finding ways to get better. And um, I, I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, uh, man, it's it's a lot of opportunity, you know, for a running back in this in this type of scheme under under Coach Slow. Um, if that's catching out the backfield, running the ball, you know, whatever it may be, it's a lot of opportunity. Um, and, you know, with a lot of opportunity, you know, good things can happen. Yeah, uh, I mean. It's, it's different because I, I won't be splitting with a, with a quarterback. You know, he t he touched the ball. The quarterback touched the ball every play. Um, you know, and then this this game coming here, I just felt like, man, I, I watched Christian McCaffrey. I watch, um, you know, Mitchell. I, I watch multiple guys. Wilson. Uh, a lot of guys have a lot of success in their offense. And then, you know, once once I came here on the visit, I got to meet Co Coach D'Amico, Coach Slow. It was a lot of great energy throughout the building. And, uh, you know, I'm a big energy guy, you know, and um, I'm like, man, this is this the place to be. And uh, you, you can feel it around the building that, that we headed in the right direction. So that, that was probably the biggest things. Man, uh, he's bright. He's, he's a bright young man. Um, he's, he's coming along well. You know, um, it's it's a lot as a, as a young quarterback, you know, coming in, learning a new offense, coming in here with grown men, you know, coming from college, coming in here with grown men, and you look at as a, as a leader, you know, out the gate. Um, but but he's handling handling it well. Um, he, he's a very humble guy, and always comes in to work definitely. Yeah. So. Um, you know, uh, we all know how how South Fran, how, how San Fran ran the um <clears throat> they offense and stuff. So being on the coach slow, uh, of course that's that's what he's bringing, but he's putting his own twist to it. Very 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 smart guy. Um, learning a lot from him just just over these you know past few weeks. You know, being around, being able to being able to work with him. So um man, it's it's a lot of opportunity out here for sure. Uh, for one is, I mean, respect, you know, you know, we respect each other for sure. Um, and then two is, and, and this offense, it's been shown that 
more than one guy can eat. You know what I'm saying? The more than one guy can eat. And the biggest thing for us is we're going to be feeding off each other, each other energy. Of course, the game is, it's a competition. It's, it's always you got to compete, but it's going to be healthy competition. You know, making each other better, pushing each other to each other's best. You know what I'm saying? Getting the best out of each other. So I think that's going to be big. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm from I'm from South Florida, so it's it's similar. You know what I'm saying? Similar. I'm glad to be back in, in this type of weather. So, um, I, I it's it's been fine. It's been fine. It ain't, it ain't been too bad. At least not. Yeah, I, I heard it's supposed to get get hotter. You know, so I'm I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it wasn't really. I'm not gonna say it was tough. Uh, driving. Uh, the first time I drove in snow up there, it was it was like a, a snowstorm. I had to go 30 minutes. It was tough. But for me, for me, I, I liked it because coming from Florida, South Florida, it don't get cold. You don't see nothing, no season, no nothing. So seeing all that snow, being being in the you know getting the different seasons and stuff, that that was that was fun. So I, I kind of enjoyed it. Yeah, that's one thing you're, you'll have some weeks off before training once you guys wrap up here. And you'll have some time before you hit training camp. What do you typically yeah how will you prepare i was asking domingo he said these guys are mentally prepared to do this they know how much work we have to do to yeah yeah, so me personally, um, I take a couple of days off like a few days off and then uh get get right back to the grind because it, it what my mind said it's not really time to chill man we we on a mission, you know what I'm saying I understand that and um I want to be a be a big part of that mission. So I'm going to uh, take a few days off and, and get right back to it. All right. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm.